morning and welcome to our third webinar here uh, on Greece. Uh, in particular today about Internet of Things and Artificial Intelligence with Greece. Today you see uh, the, the, the hosts here and we have a quite exciting agenda supported by our very experienced partner, Novali. And here are the hosts for today, plus our partner from uh, Novalink. That's all from my side, and now it's my pleasure to hand it over to Andrew to kick off the session. Thank you, Michael, and I'm really happy to be part of this, this great crowd we've got here today, and I'm going to go pretty quickly because I know we've got two great presenters following me here, and I'm going to start off uh, covering a little bit of what the role of artificial intelligence is when it comes to communications, and I'll leave the, the IoT of things to, to my following speakers here. And um, when it comes to, you know, artificial intelligence and the role it might play uh, in communication, this is a really big subject at the moment here. I can tell you from my experiences and my colleagues here, uh, there's a lot of questions, a lot of curiosity uh, in the role it might play here. And Avaya has been looking into this for, for, for many years now. And just recently, within the last two years, the use cases or the initial use case for us when it comes to the role of AI and how we're going to first approach it uh, came to us in the way of messaging. So messaging applications, uh, probably, uh, I know when I ask this for a show of hands when I'm at events, how many people use messaging applications to communicate business means, whether it's with colleagues, uh, partners, or customers here, uh, usually I'll get over 80% of the hands in the air. That using whether it's an SMS or a messenger application on your device there, uh, it's pretty much taking over the, the, the blind phone call when you're communicating with people. So allowing messaging into businesses here, uh, while that's a great idea, they're worried just like they were 25 years ago when they started allowing phone calls coming into their businesses. I can't address every single message coming at me. So how can I use intelligence? How can I use tools to potentially partially automate these conversations to help capture information before they come to live agents uh, and, and talk to a live person. And artificial intelligence is a science that's been around for about 50 years or so here, but it's becoming pretty prevalent in our daily lives. Uh, some of us use these things uh, on and off. Um, I, for example, am uh, a big fan of Spotify, and one of the features that they brought out uh, about a year and a half ago uh, is the Discover feature. So every week, I get a new playlist offered to me. Uh, they use artificial intelligence. They're learning. The machine learning is learning from my interests, so the songs I've listened to previously here, and comparing that listening uh, habits there to other similar types of people in their entire network here and are coming up with new uh, lists uh, provided to me here. Um, and I'm amazed with the quality that I, I get after, offered to me here. I know most of you will most likely have a smartphone either in your pocket or nearby you, and you'll be aware of these applications, whether you might use them or not, but this is where you might speak into a device here, and it's capturing your speech, translating that, under learning to understand it, and then trying to supply answers back to you here. Uh, again, things that we're starting to use uh, perhaps more and more. A third one, just for example, is here is now more spoken, but now moving into the home are these virtual assistants also full of artificial intelligence here to help better supply and create better experiences um, for, for the user, for the person applying to it here. But what might this mean now in our world here? So one of, as I mentioned, messaging, uh, text messaging is a really big subject and it's something that most of our clients are asking more information about. Uh, the subject of bots and chatbots uh, obviously is the, the key word that captures a lot, of, a lot of interest here. But just imagine instead of you know, using your banking application and having to maneuver the menus and the, the, the rules that they built, we call it that application language that developer in, in the web app built there, what if you just had a chat window in your banking application? What if you just went into that window there and said, I want to transfer money? And the application is able to understand that and to give me uh, realistic responses and options back to me here. And I end up doing my transaction here without having to learn that application language that that developer used when they built uh, the banking application. Maintaining mobile applications for companies is a quite expensive and quite tedious uh, ex uh, exercise for many of them. How easily could it be to expand the functionality in, a, in an application by just using an intelligence AI-driven uh, chatbot here? 
So where does this play a role? So in Avaya, we, we, we talk a lot about the social media and these messaging apps out there, but we can easily start with just very basic SMS. Right. This could be an SMS application. We have a bank in the United States who's using uh, SMS to communicate along with artificial intelligence with their clients there. They find it's uh, not completely secure here, but it's not as public as you might see on social networks out there. Obviously, this should be discussed with your clients who have mobile applications. Uh, I've mentioned this on the last webinar and the Oceana webinar here. If your clients have mobile applications, one subject you should be considering discussing with them is how to you know, communication enable that application. Instead of just having a hyperlink to a phone number, which leaves the app, loses the context here, and calls a contact center, consider perhaps having a chat uh, component built into that same application here. Just think of the possibilities you could have here uh, of communicating with customers with all the context that you have within the application there uh, with your clients here. And of course, the social networks, anything that has an API that we can connect to, uh, we can uh, have our uh, platform talking to it here. We've been doing this for now about seven years. So we've got quite a bit of experience uh, in working with these. That's why we have well over 30 languages now that we support around the world. Uh, this allows for a real natural conversation to be happened here. These are not just driven by menus that you have to go through here. Very important was, though, when we designed the concept of what we were going to do with messaging and messaging automation here, it had to be the seamless handoff of any kind of conversations to a live agent. The live agent has to know exactly everything that had happened before. We can't have a blind handoff where the agent says, again, how can I help you? And, of course, everything can be recorded and secured uh, by Avaya Breeze. I put together this slide here, and it will get a little bit busy uh, moving forward, but over the time I had learned and tried to bring together what does all this, what does this landscape look like here? So where do these messages come from here? And I mentioned already mobile applications. This could equally be as applicable for your web chat. If you have clients who are offering web chat on their web pages here and want to bring some intelligence in the middle of that, to, to perhaps collect certain pieces of information before it goes to a live agent. So the agent doesn't have to ask, who are you? What are you looking for? How may I help you? Those simple questions could be asked up front here. The social media applications are we, we've spoken about here. And of course, messaging applications from SMS through to Instagram uh, could all be considered. And the really interesting ones that are popping up and some of the uh, conversation we'll have on this webinar as well is the role of the Internet of Things. Uh, that can be sending messages and information that don't always have to go to a live person. They might just kick off a process. This is what I sort of describe as the entry points into this landscape. The technologies used, the, the, the NLP, the natural language processing and machine learning technologies, uh, there's a number of players out there uh, in the world. Many of these you might, you might be familiar with here. The frameworks where you can build uh, chatbots and types of you know platforms you can put these on. There are many, many of those. Too many to even list on this slide out here. Uh, could all be used to 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 build to provide the platform for your chatting or your messaging automation system here. But really core to all this, where we certainly believe, or we say it the other way, we don't believe that all these conversations are going to be fully automated just yet. But needing that integration into the enterprise, having all that enterprise context, what you already know, your customers know about their customers while providing a live automated chat here. And of course, the seamless integration into the context center is a must have uh, in order to be, have a, a successful you know, uh, uh, experience here. This open platform we even enabled a bank like the Emirates National Bank in Dubai. Uh, they built the first virtual personal assistant uh, out there in the region, then Ava, as she's called, can check your balance and even process financial transactions, all without not, not even accessing an IVR or even having to speak to, to an agent here. Other things this could be used for, where does AI also come into play? Two other areas, one we call, or I call it the agent or user assistance, so the ability to be able to provide dynamic responses to somebody responding to somebody in real time, if I'm an agent chatting with a, a customer and the chats are being seen in the conversation, I may have a list of dynamic responses, not just the flat list I get when it popped up on my screen here. This could be updated in real time. 
Of course, the next best action for a typical sales uh, conversation for upselling and cross-selling that could be adjusted throughout the conversation. And even assisting in knowledge-based lookups. A big subject that customers are coming to us saying, they have 2,000 knowledge-based articles here, but finding the right one is hard. What kind of tools could be applied to help ideally make that pre-selection so that my users, my customers, can more easily find the information they're looking for? The other area we see a lot of interest coming into is the process assistance, so helping to take information out of objects, perhaps this example here, a photograph here, extract that, analyze it, put it into context here, uh, enrich it with other contexts here before sending this to a live person. This is an example that I, I took a photo of my breakfast a couple of months back here, and using Google's Cloud Vision API, and this is freely available on the internet, I suggest you go give it a try, just Google Cloud Vision API by Google, and you can throw any photograph you want at it here and see what it might throw back at you. And these were the results that I got out of that uh, quick analysis there. And I think it got it pretty quite well, even though it wasn't the prettiest of picture or the clearest of, of, of photographs here, uh, it was able to identify a number of items here. We have insurance companies who are looking to uh, applying these technologies uh, into their processing of claims. Where photographs are coming in, analyze the photographs here, extract information before sending it through to a live person uh, to, to handle it further. That was a quick uh, step through some of the roles of AI you're going to be playing. I think we're going to be hearing much more about it in the future. Uh, the times are right now uh, quite quite interesting, and a lot of things are moving here. But it's important to be to just be aware of that. Breeze as a platform allows many different AI applications and platforms and services to be brought into the into the mix here. Whatever your customers are trying to do, whether they're trying to go to other suppliers for their uh, intelligent uh, solutions here, but including it into the Breeze workflow is what Breeze all allows. Moving into IoT real quickly, and kind of the lead in of introduction to my next uh, two speakers here, um, we know that in order to take advantage of the Internet of Things in a communication space, meaning triggers, whatever they may be coming from here, from devices or items out there in the world, from the Internet, processing those through a sophisticated workflow is going to be key. So not just every trigger from a sensor means call the doctor here. Understanding and applying rules uh, in between here uh, is what's really key, and this is where Breeze comes in and plays uh, a perfect role. One example I'll give it before I hand this over here is from Engelbart Software, where he built uh, an integration between Avaya Breeze and the Tesla APIs for his car. Now, his car he allows his employees also use for visiting customers here. Very easily, all it's doing here is anytime something changes on the car, uh, the lights go on, the temperature changes, the heating in this example is turned on here, a signal is then sent from Bree's workflow to his eSuite server. That's sort of, uh, an environment that he's developed over many years here. The eSuite server is then taught to identify the location of his cell phone. And if those GPS coordinates are not at the same location here, it will uh, send a signal off to perhaps a service operator, or in his case, it sends a text message to his phone. In this case, he can tell that his car is moving here, someone has his car, and he's not in it. Just as a, as a proof of concept of what's a simple example of the Internet of Things, what it might be here. At this point, I'd like to hand over to my colleague, Gurbinda Niger here. He's going to talk a lot about uh, what is IoT in a sense, but also some really interesting use cases uh, he's going to highlight here. And uh, Midge, I'd like to hand it over to you. Thank you so much, Andrew. Um, and I would like to add my warm welcome to the webinar this morning. Um, I'm obviously quite excited to showcase and explain the years of work we've been doing in the IoT space, with, particularly with Breeze. Um, and it's also important to realize that um, we've been working with a number of key partners in this space. Um, so seeing those solutions integrated with, with Breeze has been, it has been very, very useful. So um, on the next slide, um, we will showcase the go-to-market verticals that we've seen in this space. Um, it's important at this very early stage to realize that we have, we're working on the base assumption that you understand what the IoT or the Internet of Things is all about. It's the Internet working of devices, uh, vehicles, smart buildings, uh, electronic sensors, and software actuators, for example, that can all be 
bring, brought together and these objects can collect and exchange data. And I'm often asked how IoT works around smart cities and, and the various sub verticals within a, a larger smart city project. Um, IoT really is the enabling technology. Um, so it's important to realize that it's there primarily to allow us to integrate with solutions such as BMS systems, building management solutions, and also very importantly within that capability is how it plays into a, a smart workplace solution. So I'm going to be focusing today primarily on two key verticals uh, around healthcare and hospitality uh, through the use of various use cases that we've described to customers uh, with our partners. And also very important to realize is that a lot of these integration points can play quite well into other verticals. Uh, retail is one vertical that I will I'll touch upon, but that's not to do dissuade us from realizing that we've got use cases in, in, in various other uh, verticals, uh, including emergency services to take IoT triggers to provide us with notifications and, and the request to bring appropriate resources wherever they will be geographically uh, located onto a single collaboration session, um, as well as, as I mentioned, uh, the ability around utilizing smart workspace environments, which we're seeing a huge adoption of IoT technology in and around, and also, most importantly, uh, travel hubs looking at ways in which individuals want to be allowed to get notifications, whether they're late or, or early to, to gate is, is a use case that we're referring to, and how we can use that information to get them access to key agents uh, in a contact center. Uh, and then, of course, the construction and smart building vertical a very important vertical are utilizing IoT technologies to allow us access to HVAC, heating, lighting, uh, various other access control systems uh, and using that bi-directionally to getting events from those systems and also most importantly using it uh, to be triggered. Um, also important to realize in this slide is it's probably verticals that I haven't touched upon such as education. Uh, again, all of those verticals are absolutely key. It's just really showing some of the key verticals we're having discussions with at the moment. So on, on the next slide, um, the IoT spread in the enterprise is something we're seeing now, where we're seeing more emphasis of IoT. Um, excuse me, just go back one slide. We are seeing more use of IoT in the enterprise, particularly in healthcare. And this is driven by the ability to use various devices that monitor elements such as heart rate, blood pressure, uh, and, 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 and temperature through thermometers. Um, and also very importantly is how we start to update patient management systems <clears throat> and also utilize that data to get access to physicians who perhaps could be in surgery or in another part of the establishment at that point in time. So. So healthcare is a, is, is a prime vertical for us. Uh, another one, as I mentioned, is in around the, the commercial offices who want to use that environment to be much more intelligent, uh, and i.e. sharing physical spaces and the various components such as a, a phone or projector, et cetera, for meeting room and orchestrating facilities within that environment. I think it is important just to touch on the various IoT data protocols. Um, and I am focusing on two primary protocols that have been ratified by, by the OASIS standard, but that's not to take away from the other protocols such as AMQP and WebSocket microservices and Node. But what's clear here is that MQTT and CAIAP are the two primary protocols that are being used by IoT platforms, both of which support an open standard web services standard uh, running over IP, uh, and it's important to realize that we are able to utilize those as part of our integration. So let's go a little bit into some of the use cases. Um, and the first question we're often asked is, is why? Um, so let's focus on that healthcare vertical. Um, one of the reasons why we want to perhaps utilize IoT in this space is fundamentally to start thinking about ways of receiving triggers. Uh, imagine an environment where everyday devices can now start to provide uh, telephone calls. Um, so the ability to trigger workflows where physicians are across the real estate, uh, allowing patients to receive care uh, irrespective of what their needs are. 
So we have developed the following use case, uh, and, I'll, and, we, and in fact, this is demonstrable today. So the idea is that we're able to utilize a sensor uh, that is uh, managing temperature, uh, or in this case, uh, heart rate. The heart rate can then utilize, as Andrew just mentioned, the business rules that are defined if a specific threshold has been breached, we're able then to take data from the patient management system um, and determine that uh, a particular alarm needs to be created. It's important to realize that alarms, uh, typically in these environments, uh, are, are many and varied. So we're able to utilize these rules to define priority. Uh, in this particular example, we can make a call to the primary care team, provide them with an announcement uh, specific to that particular alarm. Uh, we're able then to utilize that by supporting it through uh, perhaps lesser tar uh, targeted teams, through email and SMS, perhaps joined by a, a video conference. Uh, and the most important thing here is that we're able to deal with the, with the is issue and situation uh, as, as swiftly as possible. So once we've done that, it's, it's important to realize that there is an emergence of wearable technologies in these environments. Um, I don't think we've reached a killer form factor at this point in time that truly is universally adopted in, in this space. However, what's clear is that there are various monitoring um, sensor-driven patient wearable technology that's available today that are being used in, in these environments. And also very importantly, we're able to abstract that data in real time onto IoT platforms such as Arrows Connect, uh, Utex Ibiva from Business Management Solution and Nova Links, uh, Nova Alert. Uh, what's important then is how do we take the necessary reactions by the appropriate individuals that are available to respond to that particular uh, notification. So a little bit around the how. Um, the how is very much bringing together a via breeze and the Arrow Connect IoT platform. Uh, and we've done that primarily by building snap-ins, sorry, let me just go back one slide, building snap-ins from our partner that allows to bring together um, our, our systems between uh, Avaya in form of Breeze uh, and using, utilizing about half a dozen different tasks on the Arrow Connect platform. So we are using everything from a snapshot that is able to take uh, Elements such as heart rate, UV light, temperature, gyro coordinates, pressure, uh, accelerometer, uh, accelerometer, as well as airflow and magnet, and also even the steps used in a particular environment. We're able to use those as a, a mechanism to allow us to start thinking about ways in which breeze will then develop a, a ability to respond to that particular task. Uh, and so we've done that through engagement designer, which you've seen in the past. And, and here's one very simple demonstration. Uh, as I've mentioned, the actual sensors, which there are approximately thousands of, 20 plus thousand at the moment, that we are able to uh, allow integration through via the Arrow Connect platform, IoT platform. And this particular example, it's a Silicon Labs uh, PUC sensor PUC that is used to detect the heart rate in beats per minute. And that information is presented through the Arrow Gateway in real time. And that information is then pulled into a Breeze workflow. So we're able to detect the actual heart rate uh, and build the business rule to define if it's over a certain threshold, we would like a call to be made to appropriate physicians and support staff, uh, play in a suitable announcement. Uh, once the call has been dropped, then to follow up with an email and an SMS message, and then we can bring us uh, close out the, the actual gateway. So very simple example that shows the power of how we bring together the real-time sensor information via the Arrow Connect portal, and then resulting in a, a specific email and SMS that's been powered by Breeze. So a little bit around Arrow here. Arrow of developed uh, the Arrow Connect portal that can really help us in a, in a number of verticals. I've already touched on healthcare. Uh, in retail, it's really looking at use cases such as a VIP customer coming into a, a retail store and being able to get a, a, an improvement in the customer experience that they may have having in that particular point in time, as well as on the flip side for the actual serve a retailer, 
It's the ability to not only service the customer, but think about ways of managing stock and inventory by allowing them to be managed and coordinated in, in real time. And manufacturing, uh, the just-in-time processes that many manufacturers employ can now be utilized to determine when and how a particular sensor could be used if there's been a failure on the, on the production line, uh, and that can result in uh, suitable notifications and collaboration through a number of different people in that space. And as I mentioned, transportation, logistics, and the ability to get information in travel hubs in public spaces is going to be absolutely key. Um, I wanted to, at this point, highlight an offer that we are providing many of you today, and that is that within an actual pack, we've got the ability now for you to utilize this same technology and think about use cases that you might be wishing to deploy with your customer requirements. And you've got access to the cloud-based development sandbox, which we refer to as collaboratory, where a breeze instance and all instances is available and, and, and running for you today. That is also, of course, supported by the same three-month access to an Avaya, sorry, to an Arrow Connect portal and gateway so that you've got the ability to allow that information coming from the sensor to be utilized. Uh, you also, of course, have a sensor that's a part of this pack that allows you to get access to the, to the various information elements that I mentioned. And, of course, we will allow you with four hours of support to get you uh, up and running and making sure it's working in a way that uh, you see fit. So that offer is available today. Uh, the other part I want you to highlight was uh, UTEC, which I've briefly mentioned, with their solution called iViva. And that really is looking at ways where we've built uh, a snapping that allows us integration directly into the building management system so we don't need to worry about the multitude or myriad of different uh, B BMS protocols such as Modbus, BACnet, TCP net, long works, etc. All of that is abstracted away from us and we have to just simply take the input in from the BMS system and allow us then to work within a, a breeze workflow. And that could also be digital signage, access control, uh, car parking systems, etc. So opening up the possibilities of a, of a number of other key areas. On the next slide, uh, I wanted to highlight one particular niche workflow, uh, and, and that is um, that in hospitality. So we had one particular, particular hospitality group that had a very unique uh, demand for getting integration with Breeze into managing and controlling and the cooling and heating of their swimming pools. So looking at their telemetry water system to determine when and how uh, the pool would be able to be cooled and managed. So this was actually using uh, an actual uh, sensor on the on the pool system, um, and that was then working through a Wi-Fi connection to allow us then to bring that into uh, an alert or a trigger that we were able to use with an engagement designer. So that was able to utilize everything from the ability to manage and control the actual physical telemetry water system by breeze and by directionally getting notifications when and if a particular level of temperature had been breached in the pool. Um, and how we did this uh, was via a very simple architecture, which we'll see on the next slide, where the MQTT broker was able to work with an IoT snapping that we as a VIA developed using our, our uh, low-level RESTful services. Uh, and it was a very simple subscribe um, send message and receive message back, so publish uh, and see res respond the message, resultant message back. Uh, and that was able then to work off Breeze, and we're able to use the event catalog to initiate the ability to work directly with the, the actual hospitality app that they had that could either work in public spaces or into a, a mobile app that the uh, VIP customers are using for perhaps a private uh, pool that they were, that, what they were running. Um, and my final slide really falls into the, the space of the art of the possible. Um, so I, we're referring to this as the, the POC of things, or proof of concept of things, and that's effectively saying that we could take any IoT trigger based around your Java client or, or Android or iOS client, that, and that could work directly into an MQTT broker that we're using from a third-party solution called Mosquito. Uh, and the idea then is that that could then 
be brought into the IT staff in, on brief and we could then invoke and examine an engagement designer workflow for that specific trigger. So really opening up the art of the possible. Uh, and it's important to realize that IoT now is really becoming commonplace both in the consumer and commercial markets. We're seeing uh, areas such as thermostats, smoke alarms, electrical outlets now really be readily available and applying IoT. And that's really opening up the possibility now of, of Breeze integration. So, so with that, I will stop and hand the call back to Andrew for our next speaker. Thank you, Nige. And uh, if, this is this is the second time we've had this this show here today so far. And every time I listen to Nige describe some of these use cases, I'm always um, uh, I, there's always something new here. And just thinking the opportunities that potentially are out there with your current uh, customers that you might have of triggers of sensors within their properties, their organizations, you know, the pool temperature uh, is obviously being managed uh, by systems here, and maybe somebody needs to be informed. And, and my, I like to say this communication enabling of IoT is, is a new subject for, I'm going to guess, for most of us that are, that are on the call here today, uh, but it's really growing very fast. The interest is definitely there. The tools and the, and the, uh, the, the platforms are available, and this is where uh, Breeze plays a huge role. I'm now very excited to introduce the next uh, speaker from NovaLink, Christoph Hodel, who I had the pleasure of uh, being introduced to just over a year ago uh, uh, from Switzerland. He'll introduce himself and the rest of it here, but his story is really uh, exciting. I think it uh, plays really well with what Nigel was talking about here. It's their success that they've had with their experience from the market, but what the role of Breeze and what Breeze enabled them and what actually their world enabled Breeze to do here. And so, Christoph, I'd like to hand this over to you. Thank you very much, Andrew. Uh, a warm welcome to all here from uh, Switzerland. Um, I talk about the integration of our solutions uh, into Breeze. Uh, in that presentation now, my name is Christoph Hodel. I'm the CEO of NovaLink. And uh, the agenda for this presentation is uh, I would like to tell you something about our company, who is NovaLink. I uh, would like to give you some information and uh, an introduction in our product, NovaAlert. And uh, how can this product be integrated into Breeze and help you with all that topics uh, you already heard in uh, the slides uh, before? Then we go a little bit deeper into Breeze. How can we uh, configure um, Breeze? Uh, how does it look to configure a workflow together with our solution? And finally, um, a short uh, information about how to start any kind of project together with Breeze and uh, NovaLink. Okay, we start with uh, who is NovaLink? Uh, we are a company that uh, is located, uh, our headquarters is located in uh, Switzerland. And uh, we are now 20 uh, years, uh, this year 21 years, on the market, 35 employees. And uh, we are mainly a, a software company developing solutions like the one I would like to present you in that uh, presentation now. And we have actually more than 4,000 systems today really running every day, 24 hours. Um, all around uh, the globe and the main uh, product I would like to talk to you about is uh, NovaAlert and I give you a short introduction into NovaAlert. NovaAlert is uh, a product that is mainly um, made for any kind of very fast, flexible and secure alerting um, in any kind of way like evacuation calls, notification calls, whatever, and is mainly used in, uh, in emergency situations where you, have, uh, where you have to have a secure channel to alert um, a big group of people. And um, NovaAlert does 
uh, make these notifications based on any kind of event uh, Novalert is receiving on any kind of interface channel or whatever. And the main difference to other uh, products is that we have the main focus on fast and secure alerting and uh, the system must be extremely reliable uh, like um, high, availab high availability systems and also an important thing is that we um, have to be sure that the message is arrived at the destination that means the receiver has to acknowledge the message and has to uh, acknowledge that he takes care of what actually uh, went wrong or what, whatever. I think uh, this is a very important um, sentence here. Uh, what is uh, Novalert every time people, systems or services trigger an event? Novalert guarantees fast, reliable, precise and safe notification and alarming. And um, there is no difference uh, when you alarm a single person or groups of persons or whatever. Um, it's safe, it's reliable, it's fast, and if there are not enough people, they acknowledge that alarm, you can immediately trigger an escalation for a wider um, group of people or whatever. I go over to the solutions together with Breeze. How can you connect Novalert with Breeze and, and why is it necessary to have a Novalert? I mean, you heard in the slides before that uh, uh, you can send an SMS, an email, you can start any kind of phone call, whatever, out of Breeze. And I'm sure you know that. But what is the difference? Um, if you use Breeze without Novalert, you can do a lot of things, but the question is, did anyone take care of the problem and did the message really reach the person? And if not, you have to escalate uh, whatever. And um, sh sure, you can ask for an SMS return to the sender as acknowledged, but for most of the people that's not the easiest way and it's not that easy as you would expect in any kind of emergency situation when you have to compose first an SMS back to acknowledge uh, the message. And that is one of the differences with uh, Novalert. It makes it much more faster, more reliable and precise and safe. Novalert powers up your, uh, your event, your message out um, to your people, to your sales team, your managers, whatever, and inform them. And once again, um, it integrates all the functions of uh, seamless integration into the Breeze environment, but you have some more power um, to reach your people on a safe way and they are able to acknowledge any kind of alarming message. On the next slide you can see some IDs where you can um, where you can um, uh, use Nova Alert. Uh, on the left side we have uh, the Breeze platform, you already know them uh, so far. And then we have a snap-in in, in Breeze that connects uh, Breeze direct to our Novalert solution. And as an example, this solution runs on one of our nice and small appliances called uh, Novabox. You have uh, a dedicated piece of hardware and uh, software integrated also in that appliance that takes care of all the tasks running, we call it Watchdog. And on the right side of that slide, um, there are some examples of interfaces you can handle together with Novel Art Solution. And that's not only outbound, that's uh, also inbound. 
Um, you have potential free contacts, you have serial interfaces, digital and analog radio like uh, Tetra, whatever. You can connect to any kind of wireless phones, uh, SMS pager. You can send an email, whatever. But the important things on, on the right side is uh, the sign for touch client and mobile app. Uh, we provide for uh, years now for every um, smartphone operating system a mobile app that uh, connects you directly to Nova Alert. And there is also a little bit a different client for touch computers uh, where you can use in, in the office or, uh, uh, or wherever that uh, really connects you into the system and gives you an extremely fast and uh, reliable access to any kind of message and it handles, uh, if necessary, uh, a reliable connection to your Nova Alert system. We talk a little bit more about that in, in one of the next uh, slides. And this solution, together with that interface, with these interfaces, you can lose in a wide range of um, of projects. It's just I'm sure it's such your imagination um, that uh, is uh, the border what you can do. And um, this slide just gives you some ideas where you can use Novel Earth and where we actually uh, have installed our systems uh, all around the world. Now I would like to talk about some use cases that you uh, become an idea what uh, is possible together with uh, Nova Alert a little bit deeper. And the first use case connects to the speech of uh, the last speech uh, speaker, Nietzsche. Uh, he, he was talking about heart rate monitoring that comes into briefs and um, I take over with something extremely similar. I talk about uh, blood sugar level. That means um, the patient has a device that is able to measure uh, 24 hours, seven days a week, uh, the blood sugar level. And if something goes wrong and uh, it, it is too high or too low, sends an information to breathe. And once again, Breeze is able to send you an SMS to start a phone call or whatever. But in such a case, um, it's, it makes sense to have a much more reliable um, information way. And here, Nova Alert takes over with uh, the snapping in Breeze and uh, sends the alarm in that use case uh, to the smartphone mobile app, to the Nova Alert smartphone mobile app, to the doctor or the nurse or whatever. And um, this is a text message that arrives there within seconds or, or I would say normally below one second if you use the smartphone app. And because there is no smart uh, short message service central between uh, no mail server or whatever, it's just a direct connection from the app to the Novel Art server. And the nurse can now manually acknowledge the message or, if necessary, can escalate um, to another uh, person, to another group of persons or whatever. Or if no one reacts on, on that message, the system uh, will escalate the alarm by itself to a broader uh, range of people or whatever. And also important to have a detailed reporting about uh, who has when acknowledged uh, or sent a message or whatever. And also uh, an important detail is that you can send any kind of attachments together with that uh, alarm to the smartphones or to the um, touch clients or, or whatever. And uh, this attachment can show the position of the person in a map or uh, bring some checklists what is uh, now the right way to um, solve the problem or, or, or whatever. Any kind of attachment, as many attachments as you, as you would like to send. And the next slide uh, shows you um, 
some print screens of uh, one of the smartphone apps. In that case, it's the one for Android. Uh, the first print screen shows you a reporting page where you can see what was going on in, in the past, um, who has acknowledged when and what, uh, what was the next escalation or whatever. The next uh, print screen gives you an idea how uh, it looks like um, when an alarm comes in. Uh, you can see some detailed information about that alarm. You can send a positive acknowledge or a negative acknowledge. You can um, uh, see the attachment that comes uh, with uh, the alarm. The third print screen gives you an idea how easy it is to escalate the alarm. You just, in that example, you just um, enter the uh, identification code that allows you to trigger an escalation. And on the last uh, print screen, uh, you can see uh, an attachment. In that uh, example, it is a map with the position of the person um, asking for help. Um, it can also be some kind of PDF or a picture or whatever that helps you to uh, solve the problem. And connecting to that map with the position, a short explanation of about how that works. Um, we have um, uh, uh, different solutions to locate any kind of people. That can be the patient, that can be also the nurse that uh, is asking for support or help or whatever. And uh, we do that with GPS outside, that's easy. But in the building, we can do that uh, based on access points, based on other things. But the easiest way is to work with our Nova beacons uh, that uh, give you uh, an extremely precise um, information about the actual position of the person uh, asking for help and um, interacts with uh, our smartphone apps in uh, any kind of uh, alarm you trigger um, and, and asking for help. The next use case number two is uh, also a very uh, common use case. Um, most of the bigger uh, companies have the problem if they run a, a campus with different buildings and not, not just one building where the uh, company is located. They have the problem if someone dials uh, an emergency number like 911 or in, in Europe 112, um, they have to route that uh, out to the official uh, ambulance or police or whatever um, organization, but they have to know that someone has a problem on the campus because they have to know that um, soon the ambulance or police will arrive at the main door and ask for for entry and uh, maybe they also have an ambulance team available on the campus that they uh, and they would like to help before the official ambulance arrives or whatever or they have a local or a known fire brigade or whatever. That means you have to route that emergency call outside to the to the police, but you have to know that someone is going wrong on your campus. And that is an easy thing we can do together with uh, Breeze and Novo Alert, because we uh, know with the call intercept function of Breeze that someone has dialed the uh, emergency number. And Novo Alert triggers an alarm that informs the um, the, 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 the fire brigade of the company or whatever. And, um, and then they are really prepared when the official uh, ambulance or police or whatever uh, arrives. I will show you later how, you, how easy you can configure our snap-in for doing something like that. Then uh, the use case number three, um, also connects to 
some slides uh, before. It's uh, about IoT, and the example shows you on the left upper side the building control system of, of your uh, building, that uh, something is out of normal range, triggers an event, and send it to a breeze. Our snapping takes over and um, send the information on a fast, reliable, and secure way uh, to the technical people or whatever. They have to acknowledge that they are able to solve the problem. Otherwise, Nova Alert will uh, seek something other that is able to solve the problem or, or whatever is going wrong, actually. And just as example, that can be a fire alarm, that can be a burglar alarm, uh, some temperatures out of normal range uh, in, in, in any kind of room, uh, whatever. Um, well, that makes no difference between them. You just uh, give some priorities. I mean, a fire alarm, I think, would be priority number one, and maybe um, uh, the trash um, is, is full or whatever in, 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 in the lower part of the building is maybe not uh, priority number one, but um, the, 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 the workflow is uh, the same, finally. And use case number four to 99 or whatever um, is just uh, finally the, the demand of your customer is uh, your imagination, whatever. Uh, just a few other ideas. Uh, we have also possibility to, um, to have loan worker support. That means we have rocked smartphone devices in our portfolio that uh, are able to uh, provide uh, loan worker uh, security to, uh, to your uh, workers, people, customers, whatever. And they use um, the local sensors also to, to detect if someone uh, falls to the ground or whatever, and then send the position and bring, bring help to that person. Very often we have also the demand for silent alarms when uh, people feel not comfortable with, uh, with a customer coming into the desk or whatever, then you can define any kind of key like control uh, A or whatever to trigger a silent alarm and uh, colleagues uh, come in and help you to uh, de-escalate the situation. You can alarm a, a very big team of people. Um, also, more and more common psychiatry where uh, patients attack uh, nurses or whatever and they ask for help, de-escalate and help that nurse evacuation in hotels, building protection together with digital aid, radio like Tetra or whatever. Just your imagination and I'm sure there is a way that we can... Um... Yes, um, the last part of my presentation I continue um, is to show you how you can f configure Nova Alert and these things in the breeze environment. Um, only a few sentences about that. And on the next slide, you will see that it is very simple to configure um, that use case number two I've uh, told you before, where we intercept any kind of emergency uh, number and inform the local uh, people that someone has a problem and that has dialed an official emergency number. On that slide, you can see uh, in the red circle, um, it's the configuration page of uh, the snapping, the pre-snapping of Nova Alert. You can enter any kind of phone numbers, also with wildcards, that uh, if you dial them, triggers an alarm in Nova Alert, and then you can do uh, everything you would like to do. You can inform 
thousands of people or just one person, um, you can uh, do any kind of escalation. You can ask for five people acknowledge for that alarm or whatever. It's that easy. Uh, all the other configuration options are just uh, the uh, the connection to Nova Alert and uh, the type of alarm you would like to trigger. It's really that easy to implement such a solution where you are informed about someone dialed uh, a special number. And on the next slide, uh, I would like to show you the integration in the engagement designer. That's uh, the, another example of uh, our Snap-in integrated in uh, Breeze. Uh, here you can see an object of uh, the Nova Alert object in the red circle on the right side of the slide that you can easily integrate in any kind of uh, flow in the engagement designer. And uh, here the configuration is the same. It's extremely easy. Uh, you can connect any kind of information that offers breeze to uh, the alert to the Nova Alert uh, object and um, can uh, receive or, or can hand over any kind of information from the workflow to Nova Alert and uh, that information can be used to inform the people um, and um, send it smartphone to the touch client or whatever you would like to do. If you have any kind of ID uh, request from your customers uh, and you would like to do any kind of secure messaging, alarming, evacuation, information, whatever, um, together with Spreeze, uh, just contact me, my sales team, or go through our homepage that you can see on that slide, on the bottom of the slide, uh, novalink.ch. We have more than 20 years experience now. We are also a DevConnect partner uh, for Avaya. And uh, just contact us and my colleagues and me would be happy to help you in any kind of uh, project and support you in, uh, in projects with Breeze or, or whatever. Thank you very much for your attention. And now I hand over back to Andrew. Thank you, Christo. <laughs> Thank you for this. And, and what I find so fascinating here is the, the possibilities, uh, again, of the IoT uh, area here. And, and one, of the, one of the key components that Christoph talked about is, is did that message that we sent out actually get to the person it was supposed to? Right? That, that noticing and, and registering that it actually arrived and something was done on it. A huge, huge example. I really appreciate your time, Christoph, for coming here uh, for the two webinars. I know it takes a lot of time out of your day. Um, I wanted to just quickly uh, just close on the, the Breeze platform piece. You know, Breeze is a flexible application platform, right, that, that lets customers build things quite easily. Uh, Crystal didn't talk about how much time or how little time it took for them to build their snap-in and the, the object for the engagement designer there. Uh, he also didn't mention their snap-in is on the Snap Store now available, so if anybody's interested in going there, We've shown you how notification processing, like with Novalink, uh, can work here. Applying context to communications uh, was uh, shown from our EXP 360 and their virtual reality 360-degree experiences there. And, of course, GS Lab, how they are enhancing customer engagement and shopping experience through that smart app using you know, Bluetooth beacons and the Breeze uh, SDK. Um, Breeze is the platform. Breeze is being used to build the new Avaya, and our partners uh, around the world are building this future, and we're really excited to see where this is going to take all of us here. Please use any information from these webinars, uh, if they help, to trigger conversations between you and your clients. Reach out to these partners, uh, GS Labs, EXP360, Novalink, all the information was provided on screen or in the videos as well here. If you have questions, you want to learn more about it uh, out there as well. We're, as Michael will tell you, these are all, these videos are all these sessions have all been recorded. They'll be on the sales portal. Uh, I've also uploaded them to my YouTube channel. If you're interested to sharing those with other people there, 
and uh, we'd love to hear back from you there. And Michael, I'll hand it over to you. Okay, thank you. So, let's see the summary here. And um, it all starts with Breeze. We is the foundation to make the exciting things happen. Um, you have the summary of all the three sessions here, what Breeze, Oceana, and today's session. We will upload the content and uh, recording link to our uh, Tech Talk page on the Sales portal. You can revisit the, the sessions, and if you have any further questions, reach out to the presenter today or to the engaged partners. And um, finally, 